This is the solution to Integrity's January challenge. As you know, every month Integrity runs a challenge where you can win up to 300 euros of swag. These challenges are announced on our Twitter page, so go follow us over there if you don't want to miss out in the future. This challenge contained a friends search engine where you had to prove how many friends you had. Were you able to find the flag in this challenge? If not, then don't worry because we are going to cover exactly that right now. So we have our friends search engine here and it has a description here that says, Hey there, I'm Jack Feel, and I bet I have more friends than you do. That's why I wrote this tool to prove it. Just input my name and be baffled by the amount of friends I have. One of my friends even works for Integrity and his password is the flag. Okay, so that tells us that there, there is this friends search engine and there is an Integrity employee in there and apparently uh, his password is the flag. So we need to be able to get to his password. Some issues is that first of all, we don't know his name. So, well, we don't know whose password to get, but we'll figure that out along the way. Now let's kind of explore this website. So we have uh, Jack Feel here and we can do a search here. And then we see that, oh, Jack Feel has 12 friends. Okay, that's cool. So we can find him. Are there any other users here, like an admin user? Uh, if we search for admin, it says undefined has undefined friends. So I suppose that the admin username doesn't exist. So, okay, that is the search engine. Uh, it seems like we can log in. So let's try to log in and see what happens there. So we get prevented presented with a login screen here. I'm going to try to log in as test with the password test and we can log in. Okay. So it creates an account, I guess, immediately. And then we get shown this page where we can change our email. So our email, let's just pick a dot a at a.com. We can change our email. Email gets updated. Okay. And now in our search engine, I guess we can also look up our name. Our name was test. So now we see that we have 74 friends. So, okay, that's kind of all the functionality there is on this website. Now, whilst I was doing all of this, I had my um, burp suit proxy open. So all this traffic that I generated, all these pages I vis visited, it all ended up in burp. So let's take a look at burp here. So in burp, you usually have the proxy screen that most people use, but you can also go to the targets page and into the sitemap. And here we can see all of the requests that we made to the challenge-0123 domain. We see we made a request to the slash, we made apparently made requests to slash API slash friends. And here we can see the call for Jack Feel. So we can see that with a Q get parameter, we queried the name Jack Feel and the response was this person. Um, so, okay. Uh, the response was this person and then the amount of friends that they have. So this is a, a simple API here. We have our challenge.html page, an editor.html page with a post request. And if you look into that, into the request there, we see that uh, this is the request we make to change our email. So, all right, this page, we can, we can change our email. We can also log in. So the post request to log in will log you in and we can log out. Okay, how do we go about finding a vulnerability here? Well, first of all, we need to know what we want to do. And in this case, we want to access the password of a specific user. Um, so that means we probably have to go and do something with databases because that is probably where all this is being stored. Um, because nowhere on the screen were passwords outputted anywhere. There's no way to change a password. There's no way to really get it. Um, so we have to do something with the database, I can imagine. So the first guess is, can we perform some SQL injections on these pages? So can I search for a quote? Does that give an error? Not really. Um, in the change email fields, can I put a quote there? Change email. Okay, that doesn't it needs to have a real email. So is this a considered a real email by the site? Uh, let's see. No, it says wrong email format, so that is apparently not allowed. And so that's a bit annoying. Uh, but notice that this error message is different from the one that we get here. Here it's clearly a client site fix to say, please enter an email address. Whereas here it says wrong email format. So that would kind of suggest that the, there's a little bit of a discrepancy between the front end and the back end, because clearly the front end accepted something uh, or 
the front end accepted something indeed that the back end did not. Um, so that's definitely one to check out. Besides that, we obviously have the, the login page. Uh, let's see if we can create a user, oh, sorry, if we can create a user with a username of a quote and a password of a quote that says invalid username or password. So maybe uh, that already existed. Somebody already tried that. Okay, yes, that's the case. Uh, because if we try it again, we see that that does work now and does not really give us any errors. We can even search for our friends now and that also works with the quote. So okay, um, in SQL injection, it does not seem like anything is working here. Obviously, we just did a very basic check. Um, you would also maybe want to run SQL map on all of these endpoints and see if that comes up with anything. Uh, but in this case, let's say we've done that and that didn't give us any results. Well, then we might, might wonder either the website is um, implementing all these SQL queries correctly. That is obviously a possibility or it's not using an SQL database. It's maybe using a no SQL database such as MongoDB. And I mean, these no SQL databases are becoming more and more popular. So this is something we should not disregard immediately. So uh, let's take a look at that. Um, I have opened this payload, this payload um, cheat sheet for no SQL injection. And here we have some MongoDB payloads. Um, so here, like this one says, or one equals one, for example. So we can play around with that. So let's try to see if there's any, if we can do like a quote or one equals one, something like that. Doesn't seem to work directly. Um, let's inspect elements just to be sure here that, that what's going on is actually working. It seems to be returning uh, a 200. So it Everything seems to be fine here, no errors. We can maybe change our email to a payload. That would be cool. Um, so uh, our, our name or one equals one, and then just to fix the query afterwards. So I can change my email to that. Obviously that's not gonna work because that is not a valid email address. So that's a bit annoying, but um, maybe we can actually change our email to a specific payload. Um, and then for that we could try to go into burp suit and, and see if we, we can get anything working here. So let's do that. Let's hop over to burp suit. I'm going to get a request, a post request to the editor, and I'm going to send that to, to the repeater so that we can play around with it. So here we see an email address like a at a dot com should be accepted. Let's see. This is email updated. So that has been accepted. Now let's try to do, um, let's try to change our email to something like, uh, yeah, let's see what is allowed here. So am I allowed to just put like uh, these characters in here? If we try that out, we see that that says wrong email format. Okay. So we cannot put anything up front. Can we put anything at the back here? Might be possible. Let's see. And here it says email updated. So that means that this is allowed. So it seems that the check is not limiting the end of this. So can we just do this where we try to um, change our email to this? Well, let's try it out. We, we do that. It is allowed. Email has been updated. So now we just need to uh, look up this account in the friend search engine and then maybe something pops up with this. Um, or is this our account? I, I don't even know if this session token actually belongs to our account. So let's quickly fix that by just copying the session token of the account that I'm currently logged into in the browser. And it seemed to be a different one. Uh, so that makes sense. Um, okay, so now we are logged into this account with a very weird email address, but the email address is not really shown anywhere, right? Okay, that's a bummer. Um, I think our account name was this. So what happens if we look our account name now? Wait, we get a different, a different user. That is definitely not what we expected. If we look up our account name, then we should get our amount of friends. So it seems that our injection here did something. And what is this? Well, this is a second order NoSQL injection. Um, what the backend here is probably doing is it's taking our username. It's getting the email address for that username. And then it's using that email address to find the right person 
to show the amount of friends off. So that's interesting, a NoSQL second order injection. That's cool. Can we, can we exploit this in any way? Let's go back to our sheet sheets here. And here we see our example that we just used. But then we also have this one and this.password.match and then some regex. Okay, that is interesting um, because we know that we need the password of a user. So can we just use this same payload to see if the password matches a certain regex? Well, let's try that out. And instead of doing this here, this one equals one, we're gonna say this.password matches uh, and then this in specific. Uh, this is regex, right now it's saying match anything, but we know that our flag format is integrity in capitals, integrity uh, opening brackets. So now we're saying, hey, look for any user where the password matches integrity, um, followed by anything. So let's set our email address to that. And let's again go and see if we have a friend. And oh, we found a user. So the, so the user Pink Draconian has zero friends. So I'm Pink Draconian. And I guess the creator wanted to mock me by saying that I don't have any friends. Um, but so we need to find out my password, but we know that my password starts with integrity. And we just validated that because Pink Draconian is a user where the password starts with integrity. Now, what, what could we try? Well, what would be the next letter of our password? Is it potentially an A? If we send that, then we can try. That doesn't work, so my password is not following, uh, an A is not the next letter, and uh, maybe the next letter is a capital Y, if I send that, and I try this again. Then we see that that does work, okay, that's cool. So just like that, we know that that is the next letter. Now we can try another A again to see if that works, and that doesn't work here. As you can see, it, it doesn't return anything. We can try, a, try a, doing a B as the next letter, but that won't give anything again. And we can keep trying and keep doing this manually until we find the password. But obviously that is not the, the best approach. Uh, at this point, with all the information we have, it's very easy to go and script this and yeah, to have a script automatically do all of this for us. So let's take a quick look at the code here to see how that goes. We start off by doing some imports or so importing requests um, to make requests to this uh, website. We're importing UUID and I'm just gonna use that to create some, uh, we need to create an account on the website and I'm just using that to have some random string. We're importing string because we're gonna wanna brute force uh, this password letter by letter and then string is a, a module in Python that contains some nice functions to just get all letters. Then we're importing JSON because the website returns JSON and we might need that. So what I did next is I have this class friends search engine and this is just gonna have all the interactions for interacting with the website. So we have an init, so when we make an object of this class, it's gonna set the URL to the correct string and it's gonna start a request session. What does this mean? Well, every request made with this session that receives a cookie, the cookie will then be stored in the session and with a, another request, we'll then use that cookie as well. So if we log in to this website, any other requests made with this session will then also be logged in. That way we don't have to deal with setting the cookie manually for every request and it just goes automatically. So, okay, we have a function register, which is gonna make a credential, which is just a UUID four. And it's then gonna make a post request to login.html where the data is or username is that UUID and the password is also the same UUID. So this is just creating an account, that, that's all. Then we have a function for the edit email. This is a post request to the editor.html with our email that we want, that we specify uh, in a argument. Then we also have a get friends function. And this one is just gonna make a, a, a get request to slash API slash friends, where Q is the query, so the name. And it's gonna see if it returns a 200, then we just uh, return um, the result uh, as a JSON object. So. Simple enough. So these are just all the requests we can make to the server. And now we can start by scripting, just using these helper functions. So in our, in our main function, as you can see, we're first gonna make that friends search engine object. We're then gonna register. So make an account, we get the username and we print out that we registered as that user. And now we, we're gonna have a while loop here 
that is going to try to figure out the password letter by letter. So our password that we currently know is integrity. Then um, currently we're not done, so done is set to false. And now we're going to loop over every letter in string.ascii letters, so all the ASCII letters, string.digits, all the possible digits, and string.punctuation, so all the punctuation. That way we're going to loop over pretty much any letter that you would expect in a password. Now I have this little if statement here. If the letter is in these specific characters, then we're going to add a backslash in front of it. This is because these special characters are, are important in regex, so they can change things. For example, in our regex, if we include an asterisk, then our script is going to fail because MongoDB in the back or the NoSQL database in the back is then going to see that as any letter and it's going to mess things up. So we just have to backslash it to make sure that in the regex it still works. So that's what that does. Uh, we then print out, hey, we are attempting to use the password and then a the password. We're then going to change our email address to our payload that we saw. So uh, or this password matches or password that we know plus that new letter. And then we're going to get the result, which is done by a get request to get friends. Um, and if that, if that result is not none, so if it returns something, then we know, hey, that was a correct letter. So uh, we are going to add that to the password and we're going to print out, hey, I found a new letter. The password is now our password. Then we're going to uh, break. So we go on to the next letter. So we start over again, looping through all the possible letters. Uh, now you will see this else statement at the bottom here. This is a for else in Python, which means that if this for loop finishes normally without being without having a break statement. And then that means that we looped through all the letters and none of the letters were correct. So that means that uh, we're done, the password is complete, and that sets done to true so that it notifies the program that we're done, which means that we exit this while loop. And that also means that now we have the full password. So we print out, hey, I am done, the password is, and then our password. So that is kind of how the script works. Uh, let's see it in action to actually see that it works. So I'm going to run Python uh, 3 and then our script, which is solution.py. So, okay, it registered as this user and it's now attempting different passwords. As you can see, it's looping through all the characters here and it found the first letter, the uh, uppercase Y, which we already know. Um, but now I'm just going to let the script run so that we can find out what the full password is. And okay, right now we see that uh, it's attempting password integrity. You did it. It has closed the curly braces. So probably this is the final password. And as you see, the script also finishes perfectly fine and says, I'm done. The password is integrity. You did it, which is the flag. And that is how we solved this challenge. I hope you enjoyed this challenge. This is the first time that we had this monthly challenge not be an XSS one, because obviously bug bounty and hacking pen testing is much more than just XSS. Join us next month for another challenge. So follow us on Twitter so you don't miss out on that next challenge when it drops. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, leave a like and leave a comment if you want to say anything to us. And we're always open to chat down there. If you have any questions, just let us know. But that has been it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you back in the next video.